Chapter 5 Equal Mindedness To be equally minded is to be peacefully minded, for a man cannot be said to have arrived at peace who allows his mind to be disturbed and thrown off the balance by occurrences. The man of wisdom is dispassionate and meets all things with the calmness of a mind in repose and free from prejudice. He is not a partisan, but having put away passion, and is always at peace with himself in the world, not taking sides nor defending himself, but sympathizing with all. The partisan is so convinced that his own opinion and his own side is right, and that all goes contrary to them is wrong, that he cannot think there is any good in the other opinion and the other side. He lives in a continual fever of attack and defense, and has no knowledge of the quiet peace of an equal mind. The equal-minded man watches himself in order to check and overcome even the appearance of passion and prejudice in his mind, and by so doing he develops sympathy for others, and comes to understand their position and particular state of mind, and as he comes to understand others, he perceives the folly of condemning them and opposing himself to them. Thus there grows up in his heart a divine charity which cannot be limited, but which is extended to all things that live and strive and suffer. When a man is under the sway of passion and prejudice, he is spiritually blind. Seeing nothing but good in his own side, and nothing but evil in another, he cannot see anything as it really is, not even his own side, and not understanding himself he cannot understand the hearts of others, and thinks it is right that he should condemn them. Thus there grows up in his heart a dark hatred for those who refuse to see him and who condemn him in return. He becomes separated from his fellow man, and confines himself to a narrow torture chamber of his own making. Sweet and peaceful are the days of the equal-minded man, fruitful and good, and rich in manifold blessings. Guided by wisdom, he avoids those pathways which lead down to hatred and sorrow and pain, and takes those which lead up to love and peace and bliss. The occurrences of life do not trouble him, nor does he grieve over those things which are regarded by mankind as grievous, but which must befall all men in the ordinary course of nature. He is neither elated by success nor cast down by failure. He sees the events of his life arranged in their proper proportions, and can find no room for selfish wishes or vain regrets, for vain anticipations and childish disappointments. And how is this equal-mindedness, this blessed state of mind and life, acquired? Only by overcoming one's self, only by purifying one's own heart, for the purification of the heart leads to unbiased comprehension unbiased comprehension leads to equal-mindedness, and equal-mindedness leads to peace. The impure man is swept helplessly away on the waves of passion. The pure man guides himself into the harbor of rest. The fool says, I have an opinion. The wise man goes about his business. End of chapter 5 Recording by Andrea Fiore